Hello. In this session, we will look at how you can connect to your uh, Linux EC2 machine uh, that we had launched in the last session. So in this particular session, we will look at how you can uh, connect to the server using the SSH command. So this is one way that you can connect to the server. Uh, in the next session, I will also show you how you can use this uh, tool, one of these tool called Putty. Uh, it's a UI based tool which can be used to connect to your server. So either way, the command based, the SSH command or Putty, uh, you can use either of that, but eventually both are used to connect to the server. So at an organization level, it's really your preference. Uh, you can choose uh, what method you want to use to connect to the server. I personally like using the command line to connect to the server. So in this particular session, I will show you how you can connect to the Linux machine. So SSH is only for the Linux machine. Uh, for Windows, we have another uh, protocol called RDP. We will be using RDP for the Windows machine and for the Linux machines we are going to use the SSH command. So here I have the Linux machine which is up and uh, running. So we will be connecting to this machine. Now once again before we start off with the session please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Now before we connect to the server it's important that we understand the command that we will be using for this uh, uh, session. So the command that we will be using to connect to the server. So you will be beginning the command by using this SSH command. So that's the command that we uh, tell Linux telling that okay, we want to connect to a particular machine. After SSH, we use hyphen I, so space hyphen I. The hyphen I stands for identity file. So remember in the last session, I told you that your Linux machines are easy to instances. By default, it does not support your password authentication. So it uses the PEM file authentication. So to specify that we will be using the PEM file, we use this hyphen I flag. After that, we will need to specify the PEM file, which is your authentication file. So this is like a password. So we are telling my SSH that you can use this authentication file, the PEM file to connect to the server. After that, we will need to give the username and the IP address of the server. So here the username would be the server username, the Linux server username and the IP address would be the server IP address that you want to connect. So in my case, the command would be SSH hyphen I example underscore server dot PEM and then EC2 hyphen user. Now that's the default username. So in my here, if you see, this is the server I have launched. All right. So if you have launched your server using the Amazon Linux AMI, so here, if you've gone with this AMI, the default username will be EC2 hyphen user. And if you launch a server with the Ubuntu AMI, your default username will be Ubuntu. So that's the default server username and then at symbol and the IP address. So this, um, as of now, we are using the public IP address, but in the upcoming sessions, we will also look at uh, how you can connect to the server using the private IP. But here, this is the public IP address. So you can use this IP to uh, connect to the server. So here, that's what I've specified. Now there's a space for this command. So SSH space hyphen I space the PEM file. So if you're not sure what is the PEM file um, for your server, you can go to this server. And if you scroll down in this particular section, you should be able to see the PEM file. So example hyphen. So if you see here, I've done a typo. It should be example hyphen server dot PEM. All right. So that's the PEM file. And then that's the default name and then the IP address. All right. So this is the command uh, that you can use. So depending on the server that you have launched, depending on the PEM file that you have created and the IP address, you will have to give the uh, details accordingly. So in your case, the uh, PEM file and the IP address will change for sure. If you use the same name, uh, like I have done, you can use the same. But if you use some other name, you'll need to provide that name. But the IP address will change for sure. All right. So now let's see how you can use this command. So here I have a Windows machine and from this Windows machine we will try connecting to the Linux EC2 instance as we have launched. Now the first thing we will need to verify is whether the SSH command is available in the machine or not. For that you can either open up your uh, CMD which is your command prompt or you can open up your PowerShell either of them. So I'll use the CMD which is the command prompt. You can open that app and just type in SSH and hit enter. All right. So if you get an output like this, that means your SSH is available. Now, if you don't get this output, then you will need to basically install this SSH to uh, use this command. Now, one of the option we have is we can download this git bash tool, git tool, which will give you the uh, SSH command. So here 
you can go to this git-scm.com and you should be able to see this page and here click on download for windows if you're on windows machine this will show you download for windows click on this and this will download the git executable file for us all right so here uh, sorry there's one more step you need to also, also specify the architecture so in my case it's a 64 bit uh, so just click on that and this will start downloading the git for us so here uh, my downloading is starting so it's a small file it's around 46 mb okay in this case it's 58 mb once the file is downloaded just run that file and uh, this will download git tool for us so git is your source code management tool um i'm not gonna talk about that but once you install this this will give us a git bash tool we can use that to um, SSH, SSH to the server. Now this is only if you don't have SSH on your Windows machine. If you're on Mac OS or if you're on a Linux machine, then by default, you should have SSH on your machine. If not, then you will have to install it. So this is for the Windows machines. I'll just go next, 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 next. I'm not, I'm just going with the default values. I'm not changing anything over here and the uh, next 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 and install and this should install the git tool for me and this tool will give me a git bash that i can use to um, use the ssh command so this tool provides me the open ssh uh, the command the tool that i can use to connect to the linux machines so let's wait for this to uh, complete the installation and once the installation is done i will uh, show you how you can open up your git bash now git bash is again a command line tool uh, that you get so ssh is command based all right we don't have a gui for that um ssh is using the command line uh, uh, some commands on your command line to uh, connect to the server so let's wait for this to complete and this is done so i'll finish this and if you go to your start button and if you search for git you should be able to see the git bash so there's my git bash click on that and this should open up a terminal like interface and you can use it so this is what you will see all right so here you can simply type in ssh and this will also uh, should give you the same output so now we have the ssh but assuming you have ssh on your command prompt let me show you so i you can use git bash you can use command prompt as long as you have ssh it's totally fine all right now Coming to the command, so here I have the command and this is what I'm going to use. So ssh hyphen i and then your pem file. Now the pem file we can uh, give it in two ways. If you're already in the location where the pem file is available, you can simply give the pem file or you can also give the path where this pem file is available. Okay, either way it is uh, fine. Now let me go to the exact location. So in my case, the pem file is available in the downloads folder. So I'll go to the downloads folder and here, if I do a list, I should be able to see the pem file. All right, so here I have the pem file. So let's uh, use the command. So ssh hyphen i, we will use the pem file. The username will be ec2 hyphen user and then the IP address. As of now, we're using the public IP address. So here, this will be my IP address. So I'll give that over here and hit enter and this will try connecting to the EC2 instance. Now, in this case, it will not work because uh, we will need to modify the security group. All right. So if you go back to the server and if you go to the security, all right, so you can open up this default security group and here we will need to allow SSH. All right. So here you can see this is getting connection time dot error. If you see this error, open up your security group, go to the inbound rules and then here click on add rule and we are going to allow SSH. Only if you do this and we are going to allow this from anywhere, we will be talking more on this later on and then click on save rules. So that should allow the SSH access to the EC2 instance. Now, if you go and try this command once again, it should connect to the server. Now, if you are connecting to the server for the first time, it will ask you this, like, do you want to continue connecting? So type in yes, Y-E-S, and this will connect to the EC2 machine. So here, I'm connected to the server. So this IP address that you see here, 172.31.92.119, that's the private IP of the EC2 instance. So here, you can see, that's 172.31.92.119, and that is what you will have here as well. So now we are connected to the Linux EC2 instance. This is how 
we can make use of your SSH command to uh, connect to your Linux machine. In the next session, I will show you how you can do the same thing, but using the PuTTY tool. That's all for this session. Thank you. Once again, before you leave, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you like the video, leave a like and please share the video.